Sie haben in Ihrem Vortrag erwähnt, dass es unsere islamische Pflicht ist, wenn wir einen Zustand der Verbesserung sehen, ähm, wenn dieser Zustand sogar eine Be Verbesserung für Tiere und Pflanzen darstellt, dass wir diesen Zustand anstreben müssen. Ähm, wenn wir dieses Beispiel projizieren auf die deutsche Gesellschaft, in der wir leben und in der wir auch aktiv teilnehmen und ein Teil der Gesellschaft sind, dann ist es auch unsere Pflicht, daran bedacht zu sein, die deutsche Gesellschaft von jeglichen Schaden fernzuhalten. Ähm, wie sieht denn unsere islamrechtliche Verpflichtung bezüglich den Verkäufen von Panzern der deutschen Regierung an beispielsweise Saudi-Arabien aus, die dort in Jemen eingesetzt werden oder bezüglich der Kampfeinsätze in Mali und Libyen, die jetzt letzte Woche verabschiedet werden, da diese ja nachgeblich einen Schaden für die deutsche Gesellschaft bringt, nämlich bezüglich Sicherheit, Terrorismus etc. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. What is important is that wherever we are, we have to be beneficial. The Quran says about Jesus, وَجَعَلَنِي مُبَارَكًا أَيْنَمَا كُنْتْ And Imam Sadiq Ali Salam says, مُبَارَكًا means نَفَّاعًا God made me a source of blessing, means beneficial, wherever I am. So a Muslim and any believer has to be a source of blessing, inspiration, hope, and good work wherever he is or she is. But what does being beneficial require in different contexts can be different. Sometimes people do good things, we encourage them. Sometimes people may do bad things, we talk with them and ask them, you know, please, you know, review your policies. But all with the intention of improvement, not with the intention of, you know, destruction or you know boycotting and this type of thing so i think uh, all uh, believers whether muslims christian jews wherever we are we have a joint responsibility of trying to echo together what would be the expectation of god the will of god so that we try Sometimes quickly, sometimes maybe it's very, very slowly, but we will try to move to that direction which will be most pleasing to God. Thank you very much. Um, I have also one question. You said truthfulness is the key of Islamic fundamental ethnic. How can we change it? What can we see it in the manner of having so many different kinds of Imam in so many different kinds of mosques who are giving different kinds of truthfulness at the same time? How can you change it? When I'm the one who is going to accept this truthfulness, then I will be in a manner of this is a very good question thank you what is important is that every person should be endowed with thirst for truth thirst for truth is the main thing Actually, it can be more important than having the truth. Because sometimes you are given the truth without you making any effort. For example, you are born into a family that, for example, has faith. But you have not done anything in order to reach the truth. This has less value than a person who is struggling to find the truth and still is on the way, but he has not found the truth. What is important is we should be tirelessly looking for truth with open mind, with readiness to listen, 
to discuss without trying to impose on other, you know, my way of thinking, my way of ideas. If we are in this process of searching for the truth, I think that's the best thing. And this would sooner or later take us to the proper presentation of truth. In Farsi, we have a poem, which is, I think, a nice poem. It says that, don't search that much for water. Try to be thirsty, because if you are thirsty, then water comes from everywhere to you. So the main thing is not to have water. The main thing is to look for water, because if you look for water, and inside you this deep desire for water, then you would see that water is coming from every corner. So every person has to be always engaged in the search for truth. And this truth can sometimes be a very large scale truth about the creation, sometimes can be a truth about something happened between me and my wife, something between me and my brother, between me and my neighbor, my colleague. We have to be always committed to finding the truth and then committing ourselves to the truth. Unfortunately, what we see is that in many cases, we try to secure our own interests instead of finding out what is the truth, what is right, and try to adapt. We try to make the truth adapt to our interests instead of being us adapting to the truth. This is a major problem. If we don't solve this problem, we would have lots of problems in all different areas of life. Ja, aber noch ungefähr sechs Minuten und schon vier Fragen, fünf Fragen. Ich will erstmal die fünf Fragen sammeln und dann äh, können wir die, die, die Redner auf die Frage antworten. Äh, die erste Frage war. There are six questions. <laughs> Uh, one question was how we can understand that in our search for truth, we have reached the truth. Uh, this needs explanation, but I mentioned this a few things. One is that search for truth should never stop. So we should not reach the point that we say, I found the truth, I am happy with this, and I don't bother about the rest. So. We have to be in an ongoing search for truth. So maybe something you found it convincing right now, but there is something better. So we should be always looking for truth. We should be always ready for discussion. Anyone who says, I have my own way of coming to the truth and I don't want to share it with other people, I don't want to discuss with it, anyone, it means that there is a fear. It means that there is no real ground for this truth. So you have to be always ready to discuss, to read, to listen. This is very important. And truth should be something that we can reach in a collective way. So if you had a genuine and logical way of reaching the truth, other rational people also should be able to see the truth in that. Maybe for their own selfish reason they don't accept it, but at least there must be a possibility that some people would accept. So if someone says, you know, today I woke up in the morning and in my dream, you know, I had something and I have to follow that, this is not a rational way of understanding the truth. Because people cannot discuss about your dream. People cannot, you know, take your dream as a common ground. So to be always ready to continue your search for truth, to be ready to be engaged with discussion with other people and tell them how you step by step reach that truth. Therefore, it's a collective also way of uh, looking for the truth. Why we don't see justice in Islamic societies? I think we have to say why we don't see justice in any part of the world. You know, it's not that only Islamic society. I think. In, in any part of the world, unfortunately, we don't have proper justice. Maybe sometimes we have, sometimes we have justice 
in some area of life, in some society, but then we don't have justice in another area of life. Societies can be different in their, you know, ways of dealing with justice. So I think humanity still today has not been able to witness full-fledged justice, starting with the way we treat children, women, labor, even the environment. So I think no one should be happy and satisfied with the achievement that they have in administering justice. Everyone has to find better ways to improve justice. And we accept, of course, that Muslim societies also need to work for justice. But with respect to how we can cultivate our intellect, this is a very important question. In uh, England, you know, we have uh, different weekend schools. And one of the things I always tell our community is that one of your aims must be to train rational people. Rationality is a very important aim in Islamic education. We want to have ulul al-bab, the people of thinking and rationality. We don't want just to give them some information. We don't want to dispense you know, information. We want to make them rational thinking people. And this is one important aim in Islamic education. And if you are interested, uh, I have uh, 11 lectures on Imam Qasim and intellect, which is based on a hadith on reason by Imam Qasim to Hisham ibn Hakam. And how Imam alayhi salam says that the best people in the sight of God are the people who are most rational. But what is rationality? What are the requirements of rationality? Then this needs more than one minute. <laughs> so, and regarding our common grounds in Abrahamic faith, I very much support this idea. And I am one of the people who calls everyone to restore the house of Abraham. I think the house of Abraham, unfortunately, is broken. And we have to bring back this house of Abraham. When we study the Quran, this is my idea, and I have, a, again, a series of 10 lectures, Abraham, the founder of Islam. So my argument based on the Quran is that Prophet Muhammad did not come with a new religion. Prophet Muhammad asked everyone to go back to the religion of Abraham. And this is why this religion is called Islam. Islam is revival of the name of the religion of Abraham. So everyone, Muslims, Christians, and Jews, I think has responsibility to stress on the common heritage and legacy that we have received from Abraham. Abraham is very, very a special figure. And unfortunately, I think we have not done justice with Abraham. So I'm very much supporting your idea and I am happy that you mentioned this so that we had a remembrance of Prophet Abraham also today. Thank you very much. Einsatz. Es wurde von 